Drive. It fuels performance. It's tattooed on our hearts and on our parts. It's why we always floor it. But what is Drive? It's the passion behind our people. Those who build, who sell, who service, who strengthen us every day. It's where unprecedented manpower becomes unthinkable horsepower. It's the same drive we were built on nearly 80 years ago that's carried us through decades of change. The same drive that now connects our brands around the globe and around the racetrack. It's the hands, the heart, and the muscle that keep the human engine running. Because in the end, it's not about parts. It's about people. We're not just servicing cars. We're in service of people's lives. That's what really drives us. That's why we challenge convention. That's why we bleed true blue. Because we're all in, giving it our all. In service of drivers, dreamers, challengers, and wranglers. Everyone, zero to 60 and beyond. How will you be driven? Mopar, all in service of the people who drive us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the head of Mopar Worldwide, Pietro Gorlier. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I mean, as you can see, looking around here at SEMA, customization is alive and well. And uh, what a better way to start SEMA than celebrating the Jeep Wrangler that won for the seventh consecutive year the best 4x4 SUV of the show. And, and the Dodge Charger, which won the newly established best sedan of the show award. Isn't it great? And obviously, I would like to thank SEMA for the awards and for what they do for customization. It's very important to us. And uh, I mean, it's great to see so many people coming today uh, at our press conference. Because we at Mopar always feel at home when it comes to customization. At Mopar, we support the drivers who see their vehicles as the extension of themselves with an immense range of parts and accessories. With them, you have, uh, with our accessories, you have the factory-backed freedom to put your own signature on the details of your car. And as you, and, uh, as you can see on the show floor, our designers have worked hard on these amazing concept vehicles. So let me start this afternoon with the state of the Mopar Nation. We continue to reach new levels with our Jeep performance parts. From winches to axles, to off-road fenders, to rock rails and suspensions, we have increased our parts capacity and availability. These authentic components help our Jeeps to climb dunes, traverse streams, and feel right at home in places like Moab. In fact, our sales numbers tell the whole story. 98% of Jeep Wranglers sold have at least one of our accessories on it. We have expanded also our line of Mopar performance parts, what we call the push behind the muscle. The boost, they boost the already impressive power of our vehicles and make vehicles faster, bolder, and louder. Our performance kits for Challenger, Charger, and the 300 are for those seeking a bigger shot of adrenaline. We have sold out our new Challenger drag pack, and it is really exciting to see them showing up and winning at the track. And I'm also very proud to say that in 2017, we will celebrate 80 years of Mopar, established in 1937, 80 years. And uh, for a brand, that, a brand that was born 
from a humble one quart can of antifreeze to what we are today, I think is beyond impressive. Today, Mopar is a brand present in 150 countries with a portfolio of half a million parts with more than 50 distribution facilities and 7,000 people working every day to provide support to our customers. So now, let's talk about drag racing. We are happy to have uh, two of our NHRA drivers with us today. First, our two times uh, NHRA champion Mopar Dodge funny car driver, Matt Hagan. Thank you, Matt. And our newest Mopar driver, Leah Pritchard. Leah, Leah represents our return to the top fuel dragster class after 17 years. So let me start with Matt. So four wins this year and still a chance for the championship. Yes, sir. I mean, we had uh, four wins so far. We won the U.S. Nationals, which is obviously their biggest race of the year, and still in the hunt for this championship. You know, the, the Mopar bodies that you guys have designed uh, have increased our, our, you know, our visibility in the cars. We're seeing more things. We're, we're getting out there cutting light, better lights, and we're making big power with Mopar. So DSR funny cars are all stacked in there, one, two, three, and four right now, and I think that speaks for itself. And also, we, we need to thank uh, Don Schumacher. I mean, obviously, Don Schumacher Racing. I mean, the partnership with Don is great. I mean, and we have to say, we have four cars in the, four, uh, in the first four spots, right? Absolutely. It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, yeah. it's 10,000 horsepower race cars, 330 miles an hour, and, and it's over with before it starts. So we have, uh, we have a lot of stuff that we have to uh, pay attention to in, in performance-wise, and you know, we're, we're able to get everything that we need from Mopar and DSR to go out there and win these championships. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Leah, how's, I mean, being part of the mobile brand now and, uh, and being one, I mean, one of our ambassadors? Pietro, I have to be honest, it is the most incredible feeling. I first started coming to SEMA when I was 16 years old, and I don't believe you were allowed to then. You had to be right, 18, and this was my favorite booth to come to. It always looked the best. It had the coolest things, but what is the best part for me is that Mopar is the epitome of power. And what Matt and I do is the epitome of power on the racetrack. 11,000 horsepower cars, 330 miles an hour. And you know, for everybody to, rep to represent the service, you know, the men and women in the service and, and the accessories that they sell and just everything is the coolest and we do the baddest thing. And I love wearing this blue, I love it. And I, I never want it to stop and I uh, just want to thank everybody. And, uh we are very fortunate to have uh, such of uh, two ambassadors and obviously also the other drivers. But what is always amazing that uh, when they tell me all the things that they do on a race that is four seconds, that, that's really the part that is, I mean, is striking my, I mean, really my imagination that uh, we were at dinner yesterday and they were telling me the number of things they have to do. And, uh, and uh, it seems, I mean, when they are done explaining, I mean, it's half a minute, uh, but the race just, I mean, last us. Us. <laughs> it is. It's. It's. Um, it is kind of like an exact science inside our mind to go three point, you know, six nine seconds down the track. I could talk about that for four minutes of exactly what happens when uh, when, when we launch and the tires shake and cylinders go out and then whether to lift or not and how much input steering you have or make those really really fast call decisions. And that's our expertise. Uh, but for Mopar and what you guys have today, everyone's going to see what Mopar's expertise has brought to SEMA, and it is, I guarantee you, the baddest thing in this entire this entire year, this entire show. So, yeah, we are, uh, we're getting ready in two weeks. We have our last race of the season at Pomona. He's obviously, he has a chance for the championship. My team, uh, we are currently seventh in points, and we have a chance to finish in the top, uh, top four. So that's what we're going after. We're going to put it down on the track and, uh, and do some work. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Leah. Thank you for joining us on stage. Thank you. That's great, and uh, I mean, it's really fascinating and uh, we are very lucky and very fortunate to have uh, such great uh, ambassadors for our brand. But now, speaking of champions, how about the legendary icons at the front of our display, right? These are vintage masterpieces. These are true classics. But many cars are still diamonds in the rough. So their restoration is allowing 
but painstaking process. So the question is, what can we do for our heritage vehicles? Can we make it easier to outfit our older cars? This is a question that I faced many times in my seven years at, at, at Mopar. We have, uh, we have teamed up uh, with specific manufacturers, and now I have an answer. We have created a marketplace where we have uh, uh, listed a number of original equipment reproductions for everyone. It is a website that can be easily reached from our relaunched Mopar.com. The website is actually Mopar.com slash restoration. And uh, this makes it easy to find these officially licensed restoration parts is a database and a catalog with, that will help uh, the restoration process of your classics. So whether you are looking for wheels from the 70s or looking for a shaker or a scat pack hood for a rest, resto mode build, your best go to resource will be found on mopar.com slash restoration. But of course, we don't stop there. We know that for true die hearts, it is all about what there is under the hood. And uh, these classics that there are at the entrance of our stand are unique. But interestingly enough, uh, what makes them unique is also what ties them together. You see, each one is equipped with something special. Ladies and gentlemen, our new 345 and 392 crate hemi hanging kits. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? We were actually thinking also to sell the stand, I mean, as an, as an accessory. So, and what is more important, these kits are available now from today. Each kit contains everything you need. The wiring harnesses, power distribution center, and our new control module. You can install, install the engine and the kit on anything with wheels, even a non-Mopar vehicle. Although, why should you have a non-Mopar vehicle? That's the, the real question. Uh, thank you. So, and uh, to make installation easier, we are also offering accessory kits like alternators, power steering, AC compressor, oil filter adapter, adapters, or exhaust manifolds. But uh, you don't have to take my word for it. You can ask the builders of these vehicles yourself, because they are uh, with us today at the show. And uh, I'm sure that now I don't have to tell you who Mark Warman is, the legendary Mopar Morticians star of graveyard cars. His reputation for restoring Mopars is legendary. He rehabs uh, each one with original parts. And we wanted Mark to be one of the first to install our crate hemi kits. Let's take a look at his build. When I see Mark, I just see Mopar. I, I see Mopar in the true expression of passion, commitment to the brand, and, uh, and uh, enthusiasm for every project. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean to. Where are you going with what you're saying there? The claim to fame here isn't the first time we built a 392. It's the ability to put it in anything that you want to with the least amount of headache. That's exactly the idea. I'm really excited. Because we started this project thinking about plug and play, engine, controller, and harness for, for everyone. With the controller and the wiring that you've made available for this, it just sparks the imagination now as to where are your limits. Where before is, I was terrified at the idea of trying to put a late model Hemi in any of my cars because of the wiring. That was the only reason. We could 
couldn't wait to see the engine really into a car. Here it is, and I can't wait to see the car at SEMA in the final shape. I think you can recognize the car that is at the entrance of our stand. And I, well, I, I knew that if we could exceed Mark's expectation, then we had a winner. And there is another surprise. Mark is here with us today. How are you good, doing, Mark? I'm good. How are yeah. you doing? Are you having fun at SEMA? Well, I'm having a blast. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. from a little town, Springfield. This is crazy. You walk for miles and you find out you haven't even left where you started from. It's just, yeah. this is an amazing, amazing trip for us. And but, but, we're humbled by all the great car builders that are up here with us. Great. And tell me something about your experience building this car. <clears throat> well, you know, everybody that's watched the show and knows me knows that I'm an OEM guy that I restore the cars back the way they started life. So this was one of those challenges mentally I had to kind of flesh out and decide, is this the right thing to do? And the more I thought about it, the more I thought about Mopar isn't a decade or a time, it, it's a lifestyle, right? And, and the people, I met so many people here who have tattoos. One guy's got a tattoo of the Pentastar on his tooth. <laughs> he showed that to me today. These guys are passionate about it. And so it's, it's great that what I believe we're doing here with, with the 392 Hemi that we put in our CUDA was colliding worlds together in a way that's never been done before. You've got a 1971 CUDA for all practical purposes, but it's got a late model, efficient, electronically driven, fuel injected engine in it. Uh, the biggest challenge, to be honest with you, was getting it done in 90 days. Putting the engine in was a piece of cake, putting the controller on it, the controller is amazing. Uh, once you have it hooked onto the plug and play wiring harness on the engine, it's six wires and you're running. That's insane. The reason I didn't want to do it before was you would have had to go and gut out a car and then try to start cutting off the leads that went to airbags and crash sensors and speed control sensors and try to make it run. Not anymore. Six wires and it's running. So it's been a, it's been a fantastic journey and I'm honored that we got selected as one of the top builders here to, to put that together for you. But as you can see when you look yep. at the car, we kept organic to so much. You see the original. Uh, power brake booster, the Midland Ross uh, zinc cadmium booster, that's original to 71. The bumper stops, the hood pins, the original Mopar battery, the heater hoses. Other than what's underneath that shaker, that is a real life 71 CUDA right there yeah. with obviously very cool little graphics there, the yeah. 392. Throwback. Very good green, right? It's a beautiful yeah. green, sassy grass <laughs> green. Sassy grass. Sassy grass, that's an original Plymouth color, and if it was a Dodge, they'd call it Green Go. Yeah, he gave me a lecture about the greens in the history of Dodge and Plymouth, but like I said, these kits are for sale today. And for being here today, Mark and I would like to extend to you a truly exclusive show discount offer. If you go over at our M bar, we have coupons that will save you some serious cash on these kits. And by the way, get your coupon now because they will not be available after the show. So Mark, the only thing is, isn't it a pity that we cannot fire them up? I mean, that, that's the only thing that really I don't like of this press conference. Not fire what? The engines. No, that's why you built a stand. No, we're well, gonna fire we the engine. Well, we can't. I mean, it's, I mean, I think the fire marshal will not be particularly happy. I don't care. You ever watch my show? The first rules, there's no rules. Of course you're going to start it. What are you That's talking about? A, I mean, they don't let you do it? Yeah, you look like my kids. Uh, they call the trouble troublemaker, right? I mean. In fairness, I've been known to cause a little bit, Dave, cause a little trouble once in a while. Yeah. Part of who I am. Um, mm. But you know what? You're the boss. You're the CEO of Mopar. And I don't think we can do it. I need to look I at respect I need exactly to look what some you're saying. Sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than permission, right? 
Now let's get off the stage before the SEMA guys uh, arrive to check what's going on. But please uh, meet us over at the pit stop truck for a cold beer. And always remember, always remember CEO. that oh, it no. is. Oh. That's my line. Sorry, he did this back in the shop too. <clears throat> remember, Mopar or no car. I invented that, so. I don't know. I, I've been saying that for seven years. Uh, I know I have an Italian accent. Seven years. Seven years saying Mopar or no car. Fifty-four years. It was my first words. Gag, gag, goo, goo. Mopar, that's, that's no car. That's a Ask my mom. Contest. Hi, mom. I can't. Okay, why don't we do, do do together? Okay, let's do it. Mopar, Mopar or no, no car. car. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, brother.